knowledge of grammar. First of all, first of all, we're going to give a definition about grammar. The grammar is the study of the structure and system of a language and consists of syntax and morphology. But today we're not going to talk about syntax and morphology. We're we are focusing on grammar. Here we have some examples, the beautiful girl. And we can notice that that phrase uh, can only be combined uh, in a limit form of patterns. And we can notice also that the phrase the beautiful girl is a well combined and or well formed phrase. Here we have another example. Gears the beautiful and beautiful gears that. And with those uh, phrases, we can uh, notice that uh, we can help us to recognize that grammar it has to follow a set of rules to have a appropriate grammar. Um, the beautiful girl. Oh, the article must go uh, here. Must go before an additive or before a uh, noun. But in this case, before an, an additive. Beautiful always uh, must uh, go before a noun. And girl uh, must go after an article or after an article. Um, with this explanation, uh, we have to, to define clearly uh, what is grammar. And grammar is the structure of phrases and sentences such as a way uh, that we have we've taken account uh, for all the rules uh, to follow in grammar and rolling out all the grammatical rules. Uh, the parts of the speech. The parts of the speech are parts, is an important part of grammar. Uh, here we have nouns, articles, adjectives, verbs, adverbs, prepositions, pronouns, and conjunctions. Uh, I'm going to talk about every uh, classification to have more clearly about grammar. Here, first of all, we're going to talk about nouns. The nouns are words that we can uh, use to identify things, people, or qualities. But also we can uh, identify a phenomena, phenomena, or uh, feelings. Uh, here we have people. Some examples about people are boy, girl, baby, man, women, teacher, and many more. Uh, in all this, we have pencil, backpack, pen, chair, table and car. Examples of qualities are happiness, sadness, and problems. And the phenomena uh, is something natural and they are earthquake, hurricane, storm, and many others. Uh, and the abstract idea of, uh, and also called feelings, they are hate and love. Another part of the speech is article. The articles are uh, words that we can use uh, to help the noun to have a, an identification of a thing. And between, about, among them we have a, or a, an, and that. We use a when we uh, talk about one thing, but also we use a when the next 
when the next word is a consonant sound. For example, a table or a table. Ta we can add that table is a consonant sound. A chair and a pencil. In the case of a, we have, uh, we use a uh, in when the next word is a, is a vowel sound. For example, an apple and also have an ice cream and an umbrella. Uh, the other is that. We use that to, to mention and to identify a specific thing. For example, the book, the apple, the computer. Another part of speech are adjectives. The adjectives are words that we use to describe, modify, or qualify a uh, noun. Um, between those adjectives, we have be, happy, and beautiful. Here we have such as an example. A big dog is describing, describing that the dog is big. And a happy boy is describing a boy. And beautiful is describing the girl. Uh, another part of speech are verbs. Verbs are considered such as the most important part of a sentence uh, in the grammatical form. They can be action or state verbs. And the actions, uh, can we have some examples? Play, work, run and do. They express an action. For example, they play soccer. They play soccer. And it is, it is uh, expressing an action. About states, we have be, have, seem, and belong. Uh, and example that we have here is seem that it will rain. It's something that not exactly predict, but it's something that you feel will be. Uh, other parts of uh, the part of speech are the adverbs. The adverbs are words to use to modify or describe a verb as an adjective or another adverb. And we have an example here. We arrive home safely. Safely is the adverb. And this is modifying the verb arrive. We have adjective. Uh, as we can say, it, as I said uh, before, quarter. I mean, adjective um, goes before a noun. Here we have an adjective, and this is a, an adverb. This is an adverb. Uh, it is. Uh, clear that ready is modifying the adjective order. Another and also can modify or describe another adverb. Here we have curly that is an adverb and well that also is an adverb. Another part of speech are prepositions. The prepositions um, are words are words used to to refer to time, to refer to time, place, or make conditions about things. Uh, in the time, we have some example of preposition and how we have at, in, uh, it could be after, or on. For example, at five o'clock, or in the morning, or after class. If uh, these uh, words are um, expressing a time. We have also place under the table, that is under the table, uh, near the house, and on the table. And the other connections were with, without, and uh, Another part of speech uh, are pronouns. The pronouns are instead of nouns. For example, I believe in myself, but I can I can't 
can put I for a noun. Uh, another suppose they told him about the problem. The underlying words are the, the pronouns, and it is jerk. Another part of the speech are conjunctions. Uh, the conjunctions are words that we can um, use to join or to make connections about two events. I uh, am. Um, example of them are and, because, when, and but. I want an ice cream and you want a coffee. And are making a connection about the two events or two situations. And because they are happy because they got good grades. Uh, it switches, it's making, uh, it make a join about the two events. And the same thing with when I arrived when you were there, but but I like the shirt, but I don't have mine. Uh, interjections. The, inter the interjections uh, are not part of the part of the speech, but it's important to take into account because we use the interjections in, in speaking in the daily life. And the interjections are words that we can say when something is talking, uh, for example, o, a, m, or r. As we saw in the last part, my classmate was talking about the parts of the speech. Now I'm going to introduce the parts of agreement, which is part of the traditional grammatical analysis. And first of all, we're going to define what is agreement. An agreement deals with the concordance that is implied within, within a sentence. And it's divided into the agreement in number, person, chance, voice, and gender. The first is number. Here we have a sentence that is, the child are funny. There is a mistake because we are, we are referring to a singular noun, which is child. So the verb must go into a singular form. In this case, is. But it's correct. The child is funny. In the second, we have the agreement in person. Here we have the sentence, Kali loves her dog. And what's happened here? Here we have a, a concordance or an agreement between Kali loves her dog because Kali is a third person singular and the verb goes in third person singular too, so it's correct. Then we have the part of tense that uh, we work with the same sentence, that is, Hattie loves her dog. And what we say is that loves, it's correct because it's talking about the, the, present, the present simple. In the other, we have the voice. And we have here that Kari loves her dog is in active voice. It will change in the passive voice if it says Kari is loved by her dog. Because here in this example, Kari is the one that, that performs the action. So it's active. Then we have the gender. Kari loves her dog, it deals with the pronoun that we use at the end of the sentence to refer it to the dog. We can say, Kari loved his dog because we are, we are referring to the, to the third person, to the third pronoun, to the third personal pronoun, which is his uh, uh, male pronoun, Kari loves her dog. And, as, and I'm going to talk about, about the grammatical gender and the importance of the grammatical gender in grammar. And as we know, the Spanish and English have similarities between the, between the grammatical gender, which are that they both share the same category, masculino and femenino in, Sp in Spanish, and in English, male and female. But we're going to compare these, these two, two languages with German, which have three categories. 
and with the example that I'm going to, to, to tell. And in Spanish, we have el sol y la luna, while in English, we have the sun and the moon. But in German, as we, as I tell before, uh, have three, three grammatical gender. There for male, which is uh, their month to say el la luna or the moon. But uh, in Spanish, it will change in el luna. Die is for is for female to refer to thy song in Spanish will be something like la sol and thus which is uh, a gender of a neutral gender in a good, a good example is thus fewer which will be in Spanish el fuego and well uh, as you can see in grammatical gender has a has a very important role because it's the ones it's the areas which tell us when and how is mas is male or female in Spanish when is masculino and femenino and in German. Continuing with the topic grammar, I'm going to talk a little bit about the prescriptive approach. This approach was taken in the 18th century by some grammarians, but it is still to be found today. This approach is a, it has a view of grammar as a set of rules for the proper use of the English language. Some rules for, that this approach has is that you must not split an infinitive. Um, some traditional teachers say that you cannot split an infinitive because we already know the form uh, of an infinitive, which is the preposition to plus a verb. So you can these this form cannot be separated. Another rule for the prescriptive approach will be that you must not end a sentence with a preposition. Some traditional teachers will correct um, the, the sentence or the question, the question that is, um, with who, did, who did you go with? And they will correct it as, with whom did you go? So this is a little bit about the prescriptive approach. And this case, the sentence is, and all men 
Browns and Shelton to the women. This sentence is divided in two parts. The first part is the first part is the is an phrase. The second part is divided about the verb phrase. In the third part is divided about the prepositional phrase. Grammar is a set of rules which help us to know the order of words, the structure of sentence, and things like that. As we have seen through the video, uh, we, have, we have been describing several approaches and analysis, like the traditional grammatical analysis, the descriptive approach, and the prescriptive approach. In the traditional grammatical analysis, we could observe that um, the different parts which is composed the traditional grammatical analysis, which are the parts of speech, the agreement, and the grammatical gender. 